Welcome to the Activated Storyteller 77th Podcast, April 24th, 2008. This week's story is The Princess and the Pea. Hi there, I'm Dennis. And I'm Kimberly. And I'm Zephyr. And together we are... The Activated Storytellers. We are coming to you from Half Moon Bay, California. We've been very busy this past week. It's been Library Week, National Library Week, and we have been hopping from library to library between Sacramento Valley and the San Francisco Bay Area doing shows at, and helping people celebrate Library Week. And we are sort of revisiting our roots in Northern California, the San Francisco Bay Area, where we originated. Right. Earlier this month, we kicked off uh, Zephyr's farewell tour. Uh, he has been performing with us since he was a tot. And uh, we kind of came back to San Leandro, California, and that's where he pretty much made his stage debut. Yeah, when I was two years old. I did a Thomas the Tank Engine monologue. I don't remember the exact details, or I didn't, but then these guys decided to drag out a video in front of the audience at our San Leandro show. Which was quite fun because the original, uh, the librarian there, Penny Peck, was the same librarian that ran the talent show, and she's still there, and so it was fun to see her on, on the video as well. We have a special guest star with us this week. Uh, another young teen is touring with us yet again. We, we seem to be picking up teens and, and touring with them across the country. We're having a great time with Sarah. Sarah is also living on the road with her family. We met them. Her family originally at the homeschool conference in California, and then we spent a week with them out in Albuquerque. So please say hi to Sarah. And Sarah, say hi to our listeners. Hi to our listeners. And Sarah, what have you done since we've left you in Albuquerque? Um, We rushed to Oklahoma and then through Kansas to get here, and I don't actually remember before that too well. <laughs> whoa, whoa, you have to explain that. How do you rush to Kansas to get the, like Oklahoma to Kansas to get to California? Well, Mom wanted us to, we're doing all 50 states, we're not just going willy-nilly and performing like someone I know, but we are doing all 50 states, and she didn't want me to miss out on any, so we slept overnight in Oklahoma and Kansas. So have you done anything, um, since we left you in Albuquerque, did you get to do anything touristy or fun or exciting? Well, we have been um, taking pictures everywhere we go for no apparent reason, but we did go to Texas, and apparently to enjoy the whole Texas experience, you have to listen to one hour of country, which I don't quite understand still, and I just think it was more an hour of torture because I did something that my mother didn't like. But still, my brother enjoyed it, so. And did you go to White Sands? I've got, you got a great t-shirt on today. It's got all these turtles on it, and it says White Sands, so I'm going to assume you went to White Sands. Actually, yes, we did, and it was pretty sledtastic. <laughs> sledtastic? Do you want to explain that? Maybe? Okay, well, there's these huge mountains of white sand, and everywhere around it just looks normal, and then all of a sudden it's white sands. And it's more like a park a little bit, and it's very dry there, but you go sledding on the sands, and the sunsets there are really beautiful, and it's pretty fun. So it's like sledding without the cold. Yeah, pretty much. It was pretty cold, though. Now, that's something we have not done, is White Sands. We may have to check that out next time we're out through New Mexico. We are still running the Be a Character contest, and if you haven't entered yet, give us a call or an email or a voicemail or a carrier pigeon or something, and just leave us a comment about the podcast, and we will consider making you a character in a future podcast. What we'll do is we'll enter you into the drawing, and one lucky winner will be will have a character named after them in podcast number 80. All you have to do is give us a call at 206-202-3976 or leave us a comment online. And just a word of legal warning, we're not responsible for any carrier pigeons you may lose in attempting to locate us. <laughs> Uh, we have also been doing something kind of fun and exciting and interesting this week. We have started streaming our live shows over the Internet. So you can watch anywhere in the world. We have had some viewers from Brazil, viewers across America, and some from Spain that I know of. So go ahead and check us out online the next time you get a chance. We've got shows coming up the day this podcast airs, actually. We'll have one on 24th, which would be today at 3.30 and you can watch us then. And if you don't get to see that one, we'll have another one on May 2nd. Right. First one, if you're listening to this the same day it airs, uh, this podcast that is, it will be airing at 3.30. We'll be at the Lodi Library in California. And the next one, May 2nd, we will be streaming it live from the library in Albany, Oregon. 
since our last podcast, which we had, we had Corey with us that time. We do a lot of guests. We do indeed. Uh, our last podcast was from Las Vegas. Since then, we drove up to Reno, and uh, we spent a week very busily putting together props and costumes for a photo shoot. We had some new publicity photos done, some of which are now on our website, and we we're very proud of them. We uh, we think they're just about the best batch of photos we've had done in our 20 years in business. Yes, um, kudos to the photographer on that. Photos are up for our new show, and next season, our opening in June, we will have Coyote and Eagle. It's a story from the Zuni tribe. We will also have Anansi Goes Fishing from West Africa. Paul Bunyan and the Beesquito, which is an American tale, American tall tale. Follow the buzz from Japan. And this week we have a story for you. It is The Princess and the Pea with special guest star, Sarah. Once upon a time, there was a prince who wanted to marry a tomato. No, 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 of course not. He wanted to marry a princess. But not just any princess. No, sir. Has to be a real princess. No Barbie dolls for me. No, he was not going to take just any old princess. He was very determined to find the real deal, a very special, special princess. Glass slippers, everything, you know. Uh, But no matter where he looked, well, there were plenty of princesses, but they just weren't the one. Yeah, these princesses seemed to be more concerned about their nail files than anything else. There was a long line of princesses applying for the job. But of course, (laughs) Next, state your name and your princessdom. Um, like, my name is Anastasia Grismelda Victoria. Anesthesia? I don't know about that. No, like, Anastasia. Oh, oh like, like the state park in Florida. Well, okay. Uh, bachelorette number one, if we were out on a date together, uh, what do you think I should do if we came to a mud puddle? Well, if we came to a mud puddle, I would like... Take some of the mud home as a souvenir, and then I think that you should, like, carry me over the mud so I don't get mud on me, except for, like, my hands, because I'll get, like, the mud on, like, my hands when I take it home for a souvenir. Uh, what I had in mind was just walking around it, actually. Uh, next candidate, please. State your name. Um, Annie W. Easter. And... Uh, Miss Easter, do you always wear eggs on your costume? Usually I wear bunny ears, but today they're in the laundry, so I'm wearing Easter eggs instead. I, I don't know if, I, if I'd want to marry someone who wears eggs on their costume. I mean, when those things go bad, I don't have to tell you. Okay, well, well let, let's, let's move right along here. Date your name, candidate number three. My name is Esmeralda Longbottom. Next. Well, look, though he did, he was never satisfied with what he found. And then one night, there was a terrible storm. And everything was soaking wet. And there was a damsel who came in the middle of the night and knocked on the castle door. Yes? Oh, excuse me. Um, May may I come in? I'm afraid I got caught out in the storm. And who might you be? Oh, my name I, is uh, Princess Lisa Marie. Princess Lisa Marie? You mean your dad is a king? Oh, yes, he is, in, in a far-off kingdom. I see. Well, please, Princess Lisa Marie, uh, come in and rest. Oh, thank you very kindly, sir. Hey, Dad, have you seen my cufflinks? Oh, my. Who's, who's your guest? Oh, pleased to make your acquaintance. I am Princess Lisa Marie. Princess? Lisa Marie? I think I've heard of your dad. He has quite a record. Yes, he's quite well known for his blue suede shoes. And so the castle busied itself to make the princess comfortable. And when the queen found out that there was a princess in the castle, she decided to put her to the test. Well, she might be lying about being a princess and all that, so I might have to see... I'll have to put her to the test. How are you going to do that, Ma? Well, she has to sleep somewhere, doesn't she? Uh, That stands to reason. Well, a princess must be able to feel a pea under a number of mattresses, don't you think? To tell you the truth, I hadn't given that much thought. 
And so the queen ordered 20 mattresses piled high, and underneath them all she placed a tiny pea. And the next morning, when the princess awoke, awoke who slept? You didn't sleep very well? Oh, not at all. It was the most uncomfortable bed that I have ever slept upon. Why is that? Why, why there felt like there was a lump in the mattress. Well, what do you know? My mother really knew what she was talking about. I should have been listening to her all these years. You, you really are a real princess after all. Yes, I told you I was. Well, I'm a real prince. Prove it. And eventually they got married and lived happily ever after. And that's the story of the princess and the pea. Originally told by Hans Christian Andersen and somewhat tampered with by the activated storytellers. Yeah, we've done a couple of Hans Christian Andersen stories in the past, actually. We used to do The Little Mermaid. And The Red Shoes. Yes, we did The Red Shoes. The Nightingale. And The Emperor's New Clothes. And if you're not familiar with the Activated Storytellers and what we do, we are a national touring theater company. We do tour around America in an RV. We have traveled for the past 15 years all over the United States, presenting shows at schools, libraries, and anywhere we can find an audience. And not only that, but we can navigate our own RV. We'd like to thank Sarah for joining us today. And this week, we're going to have some fun with you. Um, do you have any final words, anything you want to say to our listeners out there? Yes, Sarah. Any last words? <laughs> Make sure you leave us some comments, whether you like the show, if you think we should talk more about the places where we are touring, or if you'd like to hear more stories, uh, let us know. 206-202-3976 is our call-in line. Or you can leave us comments at Blueberry, that's B-L-U-B-R-R-Y, dot com or itunes and just a reminder we will be streaming the show live may 2nd from albany oregon at four o'clock see you next time the activated storytellers perform at schools and libraries nationwide on stage we use american sign language physical comedy imaginative props and a giant oversized book to bring the stories to life for booking information check our website at www.activated-storytellers.com where you can also find out when the Activated Storytellers will be performing near you. Read a story or order one of our audio CDs. Until next time. This podcast is part of the Blueberry Network, where listeners and podcasters come together. Find out more at blueberrywithnoease.com.